Hi, welcome to the OCR 21st Century Science videos. These videos are all aimed at improving controlled assessments, uh, specifically in this case for strand E of the data analysis component. Now, these are all the bits of equipment that you should have with you when you're completing your uh, data analysis. It's really important for graphing that you have a really sharp pencil, so make sure you get a, a sharpener to keep it sharp, uh, and a rubber, and a ruler. Now, before we get on to the graph plotting side of things, I just want to have a little think about how we set out results in a table. Now, it's always important to get your table made before you start the experiment so that you have got a plan of your experiment in the table itself. So your table of results, I'm using a pen to draw mine so you can see it, but you should use a pencil and a ruler. And I'm going to have... Um, enough space for all of my readings plus an average. So this is an investigation into how the distance of a solar panel from a light bulb affects the voltage made by the solar panel. So my first column I'm going to have my independent variable and these are the distances that I have chosen. And notice that I've got the name and the unit in the heading. And then I'm going to read the voltage generated from the solar panel. And that's going to be in volts. Now, if you're doing repeats and an average, it's often best to format your work as I'm doing. So this is reading number one. This is reading number two. Reading number three. And then space for an average. Now, it's important that your column headings always have units in. So if you've got one column heading across all of your voltages, that means that everything in there must be read in volts. So here's my table of results ready to be filled in. And I have decided to do the following distances. I'm going to do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60 centimetres. Now, <clears throat> when I take my three results, it's often best to work my way down this way. So do one result at 10 centimetres, then my result at 20, then 30, then 40, then 50, then 60, then come back up again to the top. Now, the reason for doing it vertically rather than doing all my results for 10 centimetres at once is because of time constraints. Now, if you only have a limited time to do the controlled assessment, maybe one lesson, it's always important that you have your full range covered. So if I take these results here, let's say uh, I take this one and it's uh, 6 volts, next one is 3.1, next one is 2.5, 2.3, 2.1 and 2.0. Notice I keep my decimal points in line. Now if I get one set of results and then I run out of time, I've still got enough data here to plot myself a graph whereas if I do my three results across the top then I won't have a range so I can go back and do my second set of readings and these are my second set of readings now as I'm doing this I'm checking to see if the results are roughly similar now, these two seem very similar. These are identical. This one's a little bit low, so I'm slightly dubious about that one, but I'll keep an eye on that one when I get my third result. And these ones are roughly similar. Again, roughly similar. And then, so I take my next result. Um, so... I've taken my three sets of results and I'm looking across my rows to see if the results are similar or different. Now these three all look roughly the same, so I don't think I've got any outliers. These ones look roughly the same, I don't think I've got any outliers. Here I've got a bit of a mishmash, and I would say possibly that I have got one result which doesn't quite fit the pattern. Now I thought these two were different, but actually they're fairly similar compared with this one, which is clearly an outlier, it's way different from the rest. So I go down again, and again, and again. They're all roughly similar. I've got one outlier, I think. 
Now if you notice that in the lesson, then what you can do is do a retest. So you can just retest that result and you find out that, that when you retest it, you get an answer of 2.3. And that is absolutely fine. It's fine to show your errors in your working. Now, when we're dealing with outliers, you must make sure that you deal with your outliers at this stage in the table. Don't just randomly, not randomly, don't just take your results blindly and then take an average of whatever three you get. If you have an outlier, you have to deal with it before you take the average. Now, I've noticed my outlier while I've still got the equipment out because I've been checking my results. But if you don't notice that until afterwards and you can't do a retest, then the best thing to do is completely ignore that result and just take the average of these two results instead. So you take your averages by adding them up and dividing by how many results you got. So in this case, 6 plus 5.9 plus 6.1 all divided by 3 because there's 3 results. 3 results. Here I just divide by 2 and that will give me my averages. I'm not going to bore you with the calculations. Now, you will also notice that I've got the same number of decimal places in each reading. which is one decimal place. And to make sure you, you're using best practice, it's always good to check that you've always got the same number of decimal places. And that's really because when we're marking it, if you've got results, say, 2.1, 2.3, and 2, and 2.1 uh, again, this result here stands out because it hasn't got the same number of decimal places. And the question in the mind of the examiner is, have they just forgotten to put the decimal place, or is it 2.0? So just to make sure, if you get a result with a whole number, put it as 2.0. On another note, when you're calculating your averages, sometimes you'll get an average from your calculator like that. Now, these lots of decimal places here, most of them aren't relevant because if you've only used one decimal place in your readings, then you can only really truthfully be certain of the uh, effectiveness or the accuracy of those results or the precision of the results I should say to one decimal place so your average should only have one decimal place because how can you suddenly generate an extra level of precision when in your actual results that you measure you've only got one decimal place of precision so be aware of that when you're taking your averages okay that's the end of this video in handling data just going to recap a couple of points firstly Make sure you've got a table with labels and units. Make sure that you work vertically, so you go through all of your range of independent values before coming back for the second set and the third set. Because if you run out of time, for example, if I run out of time for the third set, I've still got two results here enough to take an average. Remember to look for outliers and retest if you've got time. If you haven't got time, uh, simply ignore that result and take the average of those other two. Make sure you've got a consistent number of decimal places. Don't uh, leave one number without a decimal place. And when you're taking your averages, be guided by the number of decimal places in your readings for what you will put in your average. Don't give eight decimal places because they're really quite irrelevant if you've only got one decimal place of precision.